coming to you live from an undisclosed location somewhere in the Ozark Mountains. It's Spooky Talk Show with Josh the Devil. And now, here he is, Josh the Devil. Hey, that's right. Hey, welcome to your Not Quite Live edition of Spooky Talk Show season COVID. Episode 10. That's right, we're not live. If you guys watched last week, you got a probably you probably got a pretty good idea of why we're not coming to you live. Uh, we had all sorts of issues. None of them on our end. I don't know what was going on, but uh, we were sending out great quality signal as usual. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, it just wasn't getting to you guys, and it was looking like... So uh, no one wants to see that. Hopefully we salvaged it. Uh, we've got great audio. So if you didn't watch last week with Matt Besser, you've got to go and watch it right after this one. Uh, so uh, we got a couple things to talk about real quick, and then we're going to jump into the news. Make sure you go check out our Patreon uh, page. We've already got some great people signed up, and uh, it looks like we may have even dug out some old spooky talk show patches that we're going to send to those people. So go over to that Patreon page, sign up for as little as a dollar a month, uh, and you can be like those cool people who have already signed up, and uh, there's going to be all kinds of free stuff. Or you can head over to our Teespring page. That's right, Teespring, and buy a cool spooky talk show t-shirt or maybe a coffee mug, and you can drink coffee out of your spooky talk show mug, and the people at your office will be like, well, where's that cool mug there, Joe? And you'll be like, hey... It's Spooky Talk Show, and uh, they won't have any idea what you're talking about. Won't that be fun? Of course it will. Well, this week we've got an amazing episode. We've got a really killer interview from Skeeter Thompson all the way from Washington, D.C. He's, uh, of course, from the band, legendary band Scream. He's currently in a band called Tommy Models, uh, and I spent a little time jamming with him myself back in the day, so we're going to talk about all of that right after we get to the news. That's right, what's in the news? Well, let me push a couple of buttons here. First up, it's Khloe Kardashian. She recently debuted a new look with lighter hair and a fitter physique. But she's a Kardashian, so she's still useless. But up bump Hey, there it is. All right. Hey, new White House Press Secretary Kaylee McKinney is being criticized for being combative and contentious with reporters. Uh, she works for Trump, dumbasses. What do you expect? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, some sound effects there. Yeah, all right. Well, former Vice President Joe Biden and presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is taking... Wait, is that... Is that worded correctly, Paul? Former Vice President... Uh, I, think, I think what Paul meant to say was former Vice President and presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is taking heat for saying that people who aren't sure whether or not to vote for him or President Trump ain't black. Well, uh, Biden apologized saying he shouldn't have been such a wise guy. Hey, Joe, being wise is not your problem. I like the rim shot. We may stick with the rim shot for a while. What else? Oh, it's getting local here. It's getting too close to home. Several people in Arkansas have tested positive for COVID-19 after a high school swim party here in Arkansas, according to Governor Asa Hutchinson. Kids are still stupid and their music still sucks. The two aren't related, but they're both true. All right, all right, that's fine. All right, well, coffee retail giant Starbucks is reaching out to landlords to request rent reduction amid uh, modified operations during the coronavirus outbreak. You mean to tell us that you can't pay your rent despite charging $7 for a cup of coffee? (laughs) Make them laugh. You see how that works? It's amazing technology. Okay, stop. Oh, well, finally, a federal judge recently ruled that strip clubs are entitled to coronavirus stimulus money. And why not? They are known for stimulating. The economy, we mean. Yeah, the economy. That's right. And don't forget about Nickelback. That's right, Nickelback always brings the booze. Oh, man, the booze? The booze and the booze. (laughs) I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great interview lined up for tonight. You know my next guest as the bass player from the legendary DC hardcore band Scream. Yeah, that's right, the band from the 80s that had the um, that guy, you know, Dave uh, Grohl on the drums. And 
and uh, until he was poached away by some other band uh, who decided they just had to have him. Uh, but he also lived here in Little Rock for a while, and so that's right. Just like Matt Besser, we were able to use our local roots and get him on the show. So let's find out what he's up to now. Skeeter, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Can you see me all right? Hey, Josh, how you doing? I hear you. I can see. Let me move my picture so I can see you. There you go. I can see you. I awesome. Do. Hey, so, okay, first question I got to ask everybody is, are you staying safe? I am staying safe. Yes. Good. Okay. Go home and safe. Stay home. Don't go out. Stay six feet away. I'm doing all that stuff. You got to. It's like, you got to follow here in Arkansas, it's not being taken as seriously as uh, some of us would like. So it's good to see that that uh, some places are at least taking things seriously. That's good to hear. Okay, man. Um, so uh, I've got to ask. Uh, this is a question that I always mean to ask guests, and then I never remember. So if you can dig, and this may be tough, you got to dig back into the deep history of your brain. What was the what was the name of the very first band that you were in? And we'll call band anything that played a show. You might have jammed with some guys, but if there was a where you know a show where you actually played, what was the name of that first band? Ah, uh, well. <laughs> oh no, I didn't scream. Scream. Right. Well, no, we know Scream, but is there something? Is there something with a with a funny band? You know, come on, everybody's got that oh, uh, teenage a band funny name. Story? Yeah, sure. Yeah, actually, uh, it's actually well, it was a band called Skid Row. What? Franz and I, Franz and I went to the same junior high school. He was in seventh grade. I was in eighth grade. So we were walking home from school. We had our guitars, and this guy—it's old, like he was sort of like a motorcycle-looking guy. He was old enough. We thought he was old, but he was probably, you know, probably 30 years old, you know, 30, 32. And we were like, like he's sort of biker-looking dude, and he, you know, motioned us over. We walked over there. Anyway, long story. Turned out to be a drummer. He played with a band. He said he was a sit-in drummer for a band called Tower Power. So and he was looking for it, but he, he tired of doing funk. Tower Power's an old funk band. And he lived in, in in that area, in the area of our school. So we were walking, and he most of us up went in and started jamming. Anyway, that, that band, we ended up forming, doing a couple of songs. We played in front of a few people, really. It's like it had a little... Found out, you know, now when I look back at it, it was just some like weird old dude who played drums and got together with some young cats and let us have a party at his house and brought over a whole bunch of young kids. Who knows? <laughs> like, now, wait a minute. Now, uh, an older cat influencing some younger band members, that also seems like a familiar story. <laughs> that's, yeah, seems like yeah, that's yeah. A, that's part of the backstory of Spring Gun. We'll get into that yeah. in just a minute. Um, man, tell us about Tommy Models, because I was planning to set up an interview with you before you guys even launched that, so I was ready to talk just primarily about old school Little Rock Spring Gun times and, you know, any fun scream stories that you might, you might want to share, but... Uh, then I get uh, suddenly, okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's all this? I'm seeing these these things for Tommy models, and it looks like kind of a, a little bit of a super group type situation. So give me the rundown. Hold on, I got to put on the Tommy, to on the Tommy model glasses here. Okay, 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 there you go. Get into character. Tommy model. Tommy model is just a great idea. This friend of mine, his name is Mark Griffel. He played in this band called Body Count. In DC, it was early in the earlier DC scene. It was full of like just great. It was like a ska oi band, you know, ska oi. It was like real fun band, great guys. But anyway, he also went on to play with like the first HR band when it was still called HR instead of Human Rights, and uh, he wrote. Countless songs. We played in a few bands together. If he refreshed my mind, 
Wait, so it's his, it's his baby. So he pretty much just approached me years ago with another guy from DC that I always wanted to play, play with this guy named uh, Tommy Carr from a band called Black Market Babies. And so, and he's just, you know, he writes great music and he just, it's sort of poppy stuff. And he was like, hey, you want to play bass on this stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure. I haven't played with him in the season. In years and years and years, and uh, so it's his great idea, and he, and me, it's, it's like it's piecing together. It's really bizarre because we met this cat named Kyle Moriarty. That's like Kyle Moriarty, sort of like, you know, like shock with that Sherlock Holmes nemesis. It's like this this vocalist, and uh, he just fucking has a phenomenal range. And so we're just making Mark's making pop songs. I, I go in and just sit in and pretty much, you know, do my thing. And pretty, pretty interesting project. We're taking our time with it. It's great because, you know, he's handling everything really as far as, like, trying to, you know, doing the songwriting and not, you know, just, or just going and sort of just enhance it or whatever. And I, I think, uh, yeah, I think Mark is actually going to come on the show and uh, probably give us the rundown uh, uh, on, on, you know, what the future is and, uh, you know, all of that jazz. Maybe even have a song for us. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so, okay, let's talk. I want to jump, I want to jump back in time to, I want to say it was 1999. I want to say the year was around 19. It might have been more around 2000, but about 1999. Um, I uh, I get a call, or I, or I, I or by the, the house that I'm living in, which is also a recording studio, gets yeah. this band is going to come in. And it was a band I didn't know, but I knew most of the members. And I was like, okay, I know those guys. Yeah, what is what band is this? Oh, okay, it's Spring Gun. Okay, bunch of young, and when I say young, I'm not talking young from my point of view now. Everybody was 15-ish years of age, except yeah. for you. Uh, and uh, I I was, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm so I, that I was like immediately like, okay, okay, all right. So anytime I now this was a house where bands came through just one after another, so it was hard to keep track, but. I was like, ah, okay, I like this band. And then I remember you approached me and you were like, hey, uh, you, you're a punk rock guitarist, right? And I was like, well, I have been playing bass for the last many years because you can never find a bass player when you need one, right? So I was like, uh, you know, you know, you play guitar, it's the same thing, just buy a bass. Okay, you know, I'm sure a lot of us have that exact same story. So I was like, yeah, actually, and wouldn't mind playing some guitar. And you're like, well, this is, you know, we're doing this like old school punk rock. It's kind of the damned. It's, uh, you know, kind of a uh, minor thread. And, and at that point, everything I'd been doing was, was fairly slow kind of pub rock. And so, and I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. I, yeah, or, right, like I need to get back into my punk rock roots. I'll overlook yeah. the fact that these kids are 15 years old. I was like, Skeeter's in the band, so I wouldn't be the oldest person in the band because I was only, I, yeah. I was 21. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm closer to their age, I think, by a little bit, or about, I was kind of in the middle. Yeah. And so, yeah. so, <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, do you remember our very first show that I, that I played with you guys? Uh, where was it? Was it in some, like, huge, like, storage area or something? And it, no, it, okay, so I, I joined the, you, you were like, come join the band. So I joined the it band. It wasn't at Vino's, right? It wasn't at Vino's. No. All right, see if you remember this. We had, we had a drummer that we rehearsed with twice with me, but Cole couldn't make it because Cole was doing like after school work or something because he was in high school. And yeah. so we rehearsed twice like that. And then we went to the sound stage to open for Gut Feeling and the Hudson Falcons. And the drummer just didn't turn up. I think I, he must yeah. have he must have called somebody because I remember you. We got there and you were there and you said 
the drummer's not coming. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's it. The I guess we're not playing. And you were like, but I know all the songs. I can play drums. So you just play guitar tonight, and I'll play drums. I'm like, uh, okay. Then we immediately walk in. We play a show for a packed house of kids that do every word to every song we played. Uh, it was the most nerve-wracking experience of my life. And you were back there just like, exactly. oh, another exactly. punk rock show, whatever. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Well, Spring Guns music was basically just, you know, fun oi music, you know, four chord music. Yeah. And we wouldn't, like, we wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. Straightforward. <laughs> no, no Neil Perk rolls. No, you know. It's just a matter of backbone, backbeat rhythm, and uh, you know, some wood and steel. So it was really, real easy to like simulate that sound, and you know, it's just it's always better when you add like one thing because then people could do even less stuff, and you can jump around and get all nutty. <laughs> That's true. One and, less person on stage. More room. One, if one more person plays and goes, oh man, I can do, you know, I can, I can let this just. just to sustain this note. I can let it feed back even, as long as you sure. got to, you know. And that's what was so bizarre, because, like, I remember it's like, Ryan always had this great, like, bass sound and practicing. Yeah. He had, like, a couple of pedals. Like, yeah, one or two pedals. I've never, never been a gearhead, but it was, like, it was nothing. But every time we played, it was just, one was, like, a boost pedal. And one was, like, a filter or something. I don't know. Compressor. But it was fun. And when we played Venus that time, he just kept having, I think he was having trouble with it. But yeah, it was just, we're just meat and potatoes band. Oh, I remember, the, another, I remember that show. I don't, know if you remember, I don't know if you remember that other band. I was in, it was another band called The Muff Divers. Of course. Remember? Of course. One, yeah, of, yeah. one of the million of Sulak bands. Yeah, Sulak. Yeah, Sulak yeah. was a great front man. And we had, we had what, what was that? Be on bass and uh, who's that? God, Jason on. God, now I'm having a brain fart. That's why. No, I Brandon on bass. Brandon played bass, and uh, Justin. Justin, yeah, Justin played drums. Yeah, Justin. And they were younger. Than, yeah, and they, they were younger than I was. They, but that was a great, it was a great little fun band. That was like, was, you know. Yeah, the Little Rock, Little Rock had a lot of great fun, uh, little pockets of pleasure. That, yes, yes. Now, how did you like get mortgage board? How did you get hooked up with? I guess it was just Ryan and Cole um, in the first place. I never knew. It just seemed like they were around, and then you kind of you kind of came in and kickstarted them again because they had. Something like I don't know, twenty members over the years, and there and there they, were several they, they before had us. Something together. It's like what happens a lot with me is you know, because I'm pretty transient. Uh, I'll go someplace and I'll see a great amount of talent or whatever, and and they might need a little bit of help or whatever, but they got a great idea and a great. And I just go try to come sort of like the glue, I guess. Or something to try to bond them together, and it usually find it usually comes out to you, you know I usually have a little more experience or whatever. But the main thing is I just have a little more confidence in, in getting where they get where they want to get to. And I bet you know I was at the same spot. And you see, when bands are first starting out, they're struggling so hard, being so uh, particular about what they're playing, and usually you know being and, and you know. And, you know, people come and go because they're not really being serious. But, you know, but it's, it's always fun to, like, come and try to, oh, but put, I'm about to die here. It's always fun to try to come in and try to help out, you know, community or whatever. So let's talk. Uh, we've got just a little bit of time. we got a, a little bit of time here. Whoa, there we go. Um. Yeah, I'm following. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let's talk about uh, Scream for just a little bit. I know that uh, a lot of the people are gonna, you know, a lot of, the, you know, bass players never get 
interviewed. They, there's never, they, they always get skipped, my, myself included, even as the singer, even when I'm the singer and bass player, everybody cares about talking to the guitar player or talking to, you know, if there's a singer or whatever. So I always love trying to get the bass player's stories because everybody, everybody else has already probably been, we've already heard everybody else's stories. So what, what I'd love to hear is like when you, when you look back, like when you, when you think back to Scream, when someone mentions uh, Scream shows, there's got to be a couple of like things that may have happened that just stick out in your mind. Uh, something where, where it may be unbelievable, where you find yourself in a bizarre situation. Uh, have you got anything like that that comes to mind? The Steve they, shows where you, in, in the older days, they're always sort of like, you know, possible that things like that could happen. I mean, usually, you know, I must admit, as much of a terror of it was, as it was, most of it was positive. You know, somebody would either, you know, you know, it, it, most of it would start out bad and turn out positive or, you know, but the ones that stood out were the ones that must, it sounds terrible, but the ones that were much more like that. It was like in San Diego once we were playing, I can't remember what year it was, but we had it was pretty much all the scream. And I'm trying to remember if it was Dave playing or Kent. For some reason, I think it was Dave. We are in San Diego, and we were doing a show in sort of like a storage house, but it was a... It was it was a big one. It wasn't one small. It was like one that could hold like 200 people or whatever. It was some sort of like, you know, foreign room like that. And, uh, like 200 people, 250 pack. We're having a great time, great show. And then I think like 20, maybe, maybe not even 20, maybe 10 skinheads come in and sort of disrupt the whole show. They like, tried to punch Pete while he was down because Pete jumps down into it. Jumps down in the crowd, which he always does. Drives you crazy. Cause you can't see him, so you got to watch him while you play, you know. So somebody, the guy hit him, and Pete, it's like he's not going to take that. So Pete starts fighting, and then I stop, and and we stopped the whole gig. But the good story is we kicked those fucking skinheads out of there, out of the we were like, dude, we can't do the show if you guys lit. If you people, it was like they knew the people were violent, and they knew they were, you know, they. They weren't wanted, and they only came there to fight anyway. They, they know all the whole story, so they let them in because they're intimidated by them, really. So we say if we don't like form together pretty much and get them out, then we can't do the show, you know. And so we all came together and got them out of the show. They left, but then they came back at the end of the show after everybody left, like after all the parades and everything and salutations. We're loading up, and then all of a sudden, it comes, it's like five of us, and it comes like, and a couple of kids from San Diego are like on this crash, or taking us by the hotel or whatever, are there, and then all of a sudden, it comes these like 10, 20 skinheads from nowhere, like, you motherfuckers, you know, like trying to, you know, fight, we're just fighting all of a sudden. Luckily, some cops roll by, and we're like, as we're fighting, you know, cops roll up, break us up, it was, that was pretty bizarre, pretty memorable. Oh, the skinheads! The skinheads disrupted many a show. At uh, we had even even here in Little Rock, we had uh, there were a couple of, of skinhead altercations with uh, with Spring Gun. Uh, yep. one, it, it, like like you talk about, if you've got a front man who's who won't take that, won't take it. Who's like, I won't take it, not a little bit. If Somebody's causing yep. some shit. We it's got to stop. And uh, so, yep. yeah, Cole was known to to jump off the stage, and uh, you know, if, if he saw something going down that shouldn't be going down, he was he was the first one to yeah, jump Cole in. Was a regulator. He was a regulator. You got to regulate, man. You got to represent and regulate. Still, you know, just the way it is. He was a regulator. I used to rock with Cole. We worked at Beano's a couple times. And, and he's got he's got a short fuse, you know what I mean? Like like most kids, like most men, you know. He's got a short fuse, and you know you can just take him. You know, you can't take people the wrong way. You just got to show respect, dude. And 
at, at shows that other people show. I go to I go to shows or places all the time. I don't you know just try to act like it's in my own place. Yeah, yeah, I remember we had one with the hammer skins, and they were like, you know, I think it was only like it was probably like five of them. Yeah, there weren't very yeah. many. Yeah, there were just a there were just a few. Yeah, I mean, they were five, way outnumbered. Eight. It was a it was a packed show, yeah. and five of them they kind of stuck out. Yeah, yeah, but they were just you know just you know, and it's weird because people know them. You know, some people know them. You know, that's like Mark to say Johnson. You know, he goes like you know they know him. Yeah. I remember him when he was, I was like you know, it's weird to get into that one. It's, I must say, in my lifetime, most skinheads I ran into, thank God, are sharp skins, you know, I believe in racial equality, so it's a lot different. Well, Skeeter, yeah. we're, we're almost out of time, uh, but thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Uh, I'm going to leave Great links so that, so that everybody can check out um, uh, Tommy models. They can check out. There's a uh, a whole spring gun show from Vino's. That's on a, on a, my personal channel. So I'll leave a link to that so people can go check that out. Uh, there's a whole track in the track listing that I think is labeled something like uh, Skeeter uplifts the fans or something like that. Where in between songs, maybe it was when Ryan was having bass trouble. You were like, I got this, and you just kind of you know, led a little sermon to the punks for a minute and ever brought everybody together and kept them from arguing while there was a lull in music. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I encourage everybody to go check out that cause it's, it's, it's pretty good. You don't see that kind of stuff anymore. Um, so yeah. Yeah, well, I see that myself. uh, any shout outs hey, you want to give to, to the folks in Arkansas? Uh, yeah, of course I do. So Shim, everybody takes place young, they were Vino's. My love to everyone. My kids, of course, who are there. Who are in. Don't want to say their name, but they were there because they'd be like, Daddy, don't say my name on there. Yeah, so everybody in Arkansas should be there soon. Shim and them, Tim Anthony and them, over there, people over there. Yeah, uh, who's, uh, man, I'm going to blank now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Papoose and, and, and Alvin, but everybody, you know. And, hey, how about uh, I heard heard that uh, Berto passed away. So yeah, that's that's true. Berto just passed away uh, just a couple months ago, and yeah, it's it hit the music scene pretty hard. And you know, uh, this is one of those weird times where normally, and it's sad to say this, but we. We've kind of built a, a routine here in Little Rock for when a you know a prominent figure in the music scene passes. Uh, tons of performances, even at the 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 funeral, even at the service. Uh, there's always a concert show. There's usually a benefit show for the family. That's just what we do, and we yeah. couldn't do any of that this time. So it's yeah, it's caught a lot, a lot of us uh, you know particularly hard. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, you know, just. This carnivorous virus, whatever. Those fans won't won't be around for long, man. We'll break out and do it. Hopefully, I'm gonna be coming down there hopefully in a month or two. After, hopefully, just sit out of this whole pandemic thing. I don't want to jump out there too much, but just everybody stay safe and uh, stay in mourning. You know, just you know, you gotta remember to say say you love you to people you, you love. Say I love you to people you love. Just there a very go. fast. There we go, Josh. I love you, Dave. There you go. That's great parting words from Skeeter Thompson. Skeeter, thank you so much. You stay safe, and uh, hopefully when you get into town, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. God bless. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that's all the time we've got for Skeeter Talk Show this week. We'd like to thank our special guest, Skeeter Thompson, uh, for dropping in and uh, telling some great stories. Uh, it's episode 10. Now, normally that's our season finale uh, but things are a little different right now. Mainly, I don't have a whole lot to do, you guys. So we're going to keep making these as long as possible. So what have we got planned next week? Oh, wouldn't we like to know? That's all we got. Till next week. Later, you guys. Hit that subscribe button.